Good morning and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jeff Stauffer, Community Relations Director with Elville and Associates, and welcome to our webinar today, the 12th installment in the Elville webinar series, Wellness Series, titled Knowing Your Why, Fulfillment versus Busyness. So how this will work today, if you're new to our webinars, if you are welcome, we're glad you're here. And if you're a frequent attendee, we thank you as always for your support of our continuing webinar series. So you as the attendee are currently in listen only mode. However, we're going to continue to try something a bit different as we do with our wellness series. Uh, we want to be have this be as interactive as possible. So we're going to unmute all of our attendees during the presentation. Uh, so you can offer your feedback um, during times that Ellen and Michelle are looking for that feedback, which is going to be continual throughout the presentation. Um, so while you can still post your feedback through our chat feature and the questions panel, um, always feel free to speak up and let your voice be heard. You also received the presentation by email from me yesterday for your convenience to take notes on it if you wish. Uh, if for some reason you did not receive the presentation, it is currently in the section marked handouts uh, on the panel on your screen to download at this time. Everyone will also receive a post webinar feedback email right after the presentation. And we do ask that you please just take a minute or two to fill up this very simple survey to offer us your thoughts about today's webinar presentation. Here at Elbow Associates, we work every day with families with the ideals of client education, collaboration, and compassion in mind. And we are always available for consultations to discuss your family's planning needs and always look forward to being a resource to you in any way that we can now or in the future. So at this time, I'd like to welcome back and turn the webinar over to our presenters, Ms. Ellen Platt of the Option Group and Dr. Michelle Fritch of Retirement Wellness Strategies, great friends of the firm. We really value their friendship and partnership. We'll share a little bit more about themselves and get started with the presentation. So thank you again for being here, Michelle and Ellen. I'm looking forward to today's discussion. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us back, Jeff. Oh, so of today, course. One of my favorite topics. So knowing your why, what's the difference between living in fulfillment and staying busy? And whether you are in retirement, thinking about retirement in the next few years or retirement's decades off, it's still a very pertinent question. So I'm Michelle Fritch. I left academia and regular healthcare to focus on helping people make that transition into retirement because I saw so many people do it and have a rapid health decline. So my company's retirement wellness strategies and Ellen and I have together created Propel Comprehensive Wellness that we'll tell you about later. And I'm Ellen Platt. I'm an aging life care manager and I do case management and advocacy. And I often work with families who are struggling with the decline of a loved one as they age. And a lot of the time what we see is somebody who has lost their purpose, they've retired, their, maybe their health condition has declined and they're not able to do the kinds of things they used to do. Um, and then that's when we start seeing that downward spiral of depression and sadness and anxiety. And so we're gonna be talking about the difference between being just busy for the sake of being busy, but really finding your purpose because as, as human beings, that's, that's what we really need as a purpose for doing what we do. Absolutely. So last time you'll remember, we were talking about staying mentally sharp, things that you can do to um, maintain cognition, doing novel things, um, trying out new things, practicing, uh, mentoring, volunteering, staying socially engaged, um, spiritually engaged. So the, those who joined us last time, if you can put into the chat, what kinds of things have you been doing over the past month to help stay mentally sharp yourself. Does anybody come up with any good ideas or do anything kind of fun or exciting? Um, we'd love to hear about it and share it with everyone. I can tell you one of the things I've been doing is I have recently agreed to do ballroom dancing for the Alzheimer's Association as a fundraiser that they have in May. So I am now taking ballroom dancing lessons. And I'm very oh, happy to that. them. <laughs> so that's I what I did. That have started. I'm so excited about that. We have somebody that says they tried a new sports bocce oh. ball. Yeah. 
good, good. Yep. So that's a, you know engages the the brain, new rules and new things that you need to learn, but also physically, it gives a little exercise and it's a social game. So you you kind of hit three things in one. That's really important to stay mentally sharp. There's somebody that says uh, line dancing, learning piano, boot camps, health and fitness. Awesome. Uh, another says play mahjong with friends weekly. It's my Very great good. aunt's favorite game. <laughs> great ideas. Great. I decided I wanted to play my flute again, but I haven't found it yet. So part of my staying mentally sharp is remembering where I put it. <laughs> so if you remember this we had some kind of brain teasers last time um and if you may remember this one some people see a woman's face and some people see a man playing a horn which do you see and are you able to toggle back and forth between the two That one about what color was the dress, I, I still, I still cannot see both colors. I only see the white and gold. I feel like I have a, a brain problem. I can't, think, I can't see the blue and black. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you've joined us any, and I can't believe it's been 12 now, Jeff, any of yeah. the 12 sessions, you'll find that, that this is really our focus. Are you doing everything you can to preserve a really healthy, vital, functional future? Because we found that the things that derail people from this kind of outcome, they're almost always preventable. So we've poured ourselves into identifying how to help people make plans that prevent the things that could derail them. And so this is just another piece of that important journey to think about purpose. So I want you to take about 30 seconds and think about three things that you if, that you might want to do if you had extra time. So if you had just a little bit of time carved out in your day or or maybe even a little bit of extended period of time, write down three things that you would do. Things that really excite you or really um, make you feel good or really something you've been wanting to do for a long time and just haven't gotten around to it. So what are those three things for you? And if anybody wants to put a couple of those things into the chat to share with others, I might give some ideas. Some people might want to just have lunch with a friend or catch up with somebody that they haven't seen. Somebody might wanna take one of those classes that we talked about. Maybe take a trip. Have golf, work in the yard, bird watching. Good, good. All right, so now by show of um, hands, we have also, I uh, go back to school and get health coach degree or a nutrition degree. Ooh, awesome. Now, I think we have, um, do we have icons where people can raise their hand, Jeff, with this, with GoToWebinar? Um, let's see here. Um, let's see if, if we hand raising here. We can do it through the chat because what I'd like to do is I want you to look at those three things that you have on your list now and I would like you to put into the chat if you have one of those three things on your schedule right now in the next month. So yes or no whether they already have scheduled it before you ask the question. Is so that what you're saying? Yeah, do you have one of those three things on your schedule in the next month? Yes or no? Is it on your calendar? I 
have a yes. Good. Another yes. Another yes. Good, the yeses are coming in. I'm impressed. Good, because often we ask this question and they're, they're all no's. Mm -hmm. they don't have it on their calendar. Um, and then before you know it, a lot of time has gone by and you haven't done those things that really excite you or give you meaning and purpose. So I'm gonna challenge everybody who was a no that didn't put it into the chat to look at your list and put one of them and, and make arrangements to get it on your calendar in the next month. I like that. So just another way of saying it, if you had all the time in the world and you could do anything, what would you do? Now we have somebody else who says, uh, take golf lessons, join a bowling league take piano lessons and none of these are currently on the calendar. Okay. Well, half the battle is coming up with what it is. So you've got what it is. Now we just need to figure out when. Get it started. Kind of like you, Ellen, with the dancing, you don't have to have it all figured out until May. But when you were even making the decision of whether you were going to commit to this, you started the lessons just just to kind of make sure it's something you like, that you wanted to do, that you felt like you could do. It became part of your life before you had to make the firm commitment, if I understand right. Yep. Yep. And worst case scenario, I get a little bit of exercise and learn something new. Right. So today we're going to be talking about the really big difference between staying busy and actually being fulfilled. So I have some examples to kind of get us started and help understand the difference. This is um, someone I know well who stays busy. They have a morning routine. Certain things happen from the minute they wake up until they make it into the kitchen, always in the same order. They watch the news while making breakfast. They try to stay mentally sharp by working crossword puzzles while sipping coffee after breakfast has been finished and cleaned up. They then have a specific pattern that they walk around the neighborhood, come home, check the computer for messages, then begin the prep for lunch, eat lunch, clean up lunch, then vacuum the house, then take a scheduled nap, get up from the nap, start the prep, um, sometimes have a cocktail, eat dinner, clean up dinner, turn on the TV, watch that until bed, and pick any day on the calendar, and this person has the exact same routine, and when you talk to them about doing something new or different, they're like, oh, I don't have any time. My days are so full. Can anybody relate to this? And would you see this, I guess maybe I'm being judgy, but would you see this as staying busy or being fulfilled? Hmm. Nobody wants to touch that one. While you're thinking about it, I want to show you a picture. I um, am very excited and I can talk to you about this for days if you want we have, to. Yes. We have one comment. Um, she says, as a former caregiver for years, routine is actually very enjoyable for me. And I'm not being anti-routine. That is an absolutely great point. Absolutely great point. And we've talked in other months about cognitive decline and dementia and how important regular routine is to keep someone who's having difficult with mental, difficulty with mental processing to keep them comfortable in their surroundings, how important their routine can be.
I have found and kind of talked earlier, the reason that I left academia and left regular healthcare was I was seeing too many people who had active lifestyles, active careers. Many of them were leaders, executives, managers, who upon retirement lost that drive, kind of lost that sense of who they really were. And as soon as they did, their health declined rapidly. I couldn't begin to tally the number of people who were very active and engaged in the world and gone within a couple of years of retirement. And I'm sure you've seen some of the same. And I believe one critical factor in all of that is actually lack of purpose. And so I just got back from Italy. It was the trip of a lifetime. And if you've ever been to Florence, you've seen this statue and you can tell by the man standing under how big this statue is. But the thing that it made me think about is if this man came and every day he held up that wall, he got out of bed, he came to this particular location and he spent his entire day holding up that wall. He was busy and he felt like he was contributing something. And every day he was holding up that wall and then at the end of the day he would go home and the next day do it again. But that wall is going to stand fine by itself. So is there some other way that he could use his skills and interests that would maybe be more engaging and fulfilling for him. So as I kind of mentioned, I believe that you can really delay a lot of health decline by figuring out that more fulfilling purpose in the next phase of your life. And by doing that before the day of retirement, because I've seen several people, and again, usually leaders, who were fine, didn't think about post-retirement until retirement came, and fell into that depression and despair way too quickly. It was hard to pull them back out once they got there. I wanted to share just a few comments. Um, going back to the um, daily routine um, list that you mentioned there, Michelle uh -huh. um, had somebody that says, uh, looks busy, but no social activities. Um, yes, this resonates with me. I feel like I accomplish little. Um, and then another person says, I hate routine. I like to improvise, create, and enjoy nature. She, I think she says. And having that self-awareness of what does motivate you is so important. Some people, again, that the routine can be great as long as you pull in some other elements. I just love this quote. And tell me how you resonate with it or don't resonate with it. People who labor all their lives and have no purpose to direct all their thoughts and impulses toward are wasting their time even when hard at work. And I want you to know that this quote comes from someone in AD year 121. So if it feels like these struggles are unique to our time frame, obviously not. This was active 2000 years ago. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Marcus Aurelius was around when um, some of the structures that I saw in Rome were being built. It's kind of hard for me to fathom that much time lapse. Well, as you're thinking about so, it, can yes. you we're asking a couple people if you can repeat the quote again. Um, maybe we have some people listening on their phone, possibly. Oh, absolutely. 
So the quote is, people who labor all their lives but have no purpose to direct every thought and impulse toward are wasting their time even when hard at work. So short version is labor without purpose is wasting your time. I know companies um, are spending a lot of time on this and making sure that employees understand and align with the purpose of the company. And then some are going a level deeper and making sure that the person's personal purpose, their, their reason for being the, the things that bring them alive, align with their job within that company and that company's purpose. So as you're thinking about this, we have some examples of people who appear to have found their purpose. And look, I think you'll resonate with things in their lives. So this is someone we all know, um, Betty White. She died just short of her 100th birthday. They were getting ready to have a big birthday celebration, but she did not make it to 100, just shy of that. She was a young woman who started on the radio. A lot of people may not know that. Um, and she worked for 74 years. Um, and she, she made her, her debut in 1939. Um, and then she actually got into the Guinness Book of World Records for being the longest TV career for a female entertainer. So it's kind of neat. She's done lots of shows. She got into sitcoms. She got into game shows. She got into movies. And when a lot of actresses were kind of hanging it up and retiring, um, her career even blossomed, blossomed more. And a lot of people know her from the Golden Girls. Um, so she got into that and got with, won six Emmys. Uh, three American Comedy Awards and a Grammy Award and the Guinness Book of World Records. And there are some other smaller awards that she had won. But what was interesting, you would think that would be enough. And she had a purpose and got to travel the world and do all kinds of things. But she actually had a purpose even outside of her entertainment. And that was, um, she was an animal rights activist. Um, she supported zoos, animal welf welfare organizations, and a number of foundations that would take care of animals or help um, animals that were becoming extinct. So it's kind of a whole nother side of her where she had a separate purpose than just her life work, which is what a lot of us look for. Um, so I, that was kind of neat. Yeah, I never knew that about her. Mm -hmm. And she even won an award from Smokey the Bear due to her oh. animal, <laughs> animal welfare activities. <laughs> Something to aspire to, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So prior to becoming the 43rd president, George Bush was in the 147th infancy um, uh, fighter interceptor group through the Texas Air National Guard. So he was in the service in 1968, was in the Vietnam War, and he stayed in until 1974. Um, and since his retirement, he decided that every fifth birthday, he was going to um, do a jump. So on his 75th birthday, he did a solo jump. On his 70, uh, 80th and 85th birthday, he did a tandem jump here you know, with somebody else. And his last and final jump was at the age of 95. I'm sorry, at the age of nine, uh, I'm sorry, the age of 90. It was in 2014, he was 90 years old. That was his last and final jump. And in spite of the fact that he was confined to a wheelchair at that point. Wow. And he passed in 2018. The longevity of the people we're talking about is, 
likely not by accident. Part of it's genetics, but there's some good data to say that finding and living in your purpose is another important piece. And some of that data and the research has shown that identifying your purpose partly enhances your relationship with family and other relationships. It gives you more, almost more reason to stay engaged in those relationships, bigger impact within your community, people with purpose, are always, to my knowledge, helping others, learning new skills, taking part in new hobbies and activities that weren't necessarily part of their life during their primary career. Data is also, also showing, and some of this came from a big Harvard study, that those that have more life purpose have a lower rate of death in the time that they were tracking people, they had less heart disease or cardiovascular disease um, issues as well as deaths and fewer digestive concerns. So that's like upset stomach and ulcers and heartburn and some of those sorts of things was lower, interestingly, for the people with living in purpose. So let me stop there and ask what questions do you have or, or input? Um, are you resonating with this? Are you not? We'd love to hear. We do have some some thoughts here. Um, going back a little bit, we have some things coming in right now. Um, we have somebody that says, I just retired now, and now I know it is so important to retire to something. Yes. Um, Another that says, um, haven't read through it all yet. I have been out of work, the workforce 18 years because of feeling like I have no purpose. I've signed up for over 50 job boot camps that will begin in January, where I will be given resources to help me re-enter the job force. It will be five days, eight hours per day. I will also be taking various tech courses to get me up to par. I'm hoping this will help with my sense of purpose. I gave up nursing in 2004 due to going overseas with my husband for his job and stayed 14 years. I need to reinvent myself. Uh, we also have a comment um, going back to the labor quote um, that says, uh, except for slave labor, could you please give example of labor without purpose? Oh. I think there are a lot of people who have jobs for the sake of jobs, for the sake of money coming in, but it doesn't bring them personal fulfillment. And I, I think that came to a head with the pandemic and you've been hearing about the great resignation and people are realizing that they weren't getting, being fulfilled by their occupation. Um, and they wanted to, you know, they had maybe a little bit more time working at home or or losing their work because of the pandemic that they had time to think about it and realize that what they were doing was not very fulfilling. And um, a lot of employers are struggling with finding good help because people are just not um, flocking back to the to the workforce as quickly as they had we had thought they would um, because they're waiting for something that's going to be a little more fulfilling or they're pursuing education and other avenues of different types of employment from what they were doing before. Great example. Absolutely. Right. I think that a lot of employers, a lot of employers need to tailor their um, job experiences and work environments more to the uh, applicants these days, you know, people are looking for something very specific, specific like a uh, hybrid work environment, um, and that, that's something that a lot of people are looking for. So, uh, in order to, to attract applicants and you know quality applicants, you know, people are looking for something a little bit more from what was the traditional um, uh, traditional quote unquote um, job or career in the past. So. Um, I don't think we're going to see the typical nine to five anymore. People want the flexibility. Yeah. 
and the work-life right. balance that perhaps they didn't have before. Yeah. yeah. We have a, another comment from one of our uh, really good clients here. Uh, hello there, Deidre. Um, she says, uh, going back to uh, Betty White, um, she says, yes, I work for Smokey Bear at the U.S. Forest Service. We honored her at the Kennedy Center a few years ago as she was, as she always wanted to be a forest ranger, but they didn't allow girls or women to go into those positions during her day. I'm living proof that has changed now. Um, Gives me chills. <laughs> yeah. And Love so, it. you know, thank you for sharing that, Deidre. Um, and another comment, um, how to stop procrastinating and watching days go by without working toward purpose. How do you make this goal manageable so you don't become overwhelmed and just quit? We're going to talk about that in just a minute. That's a great question. I want to go back for a second. I mentioned companies that are helping people align with the company purpose. And then the ones going a level deeper to make sure the personal purpose is aligned with company purpose. I was talking to this fairly new upstart company that has a sort of a survey or a tool that within these big companies, everybody can take the tool and it helps show how aligned people are with the company mission, how um, satisfied they are in their job, how supported they feel in their jobs, really diving deep into that whole, is this the right job for you? And one of the beta test companies that used this tool is reorganizing their company because they found out that this person is not really satisfied in their current job, but they would be great in this other job. And this other person would be great with a switch over here. And so they're taking very tangible steps to align their employees so that their personal purpose fits with the needs of the company. Does that make sense? Because I was so impressed by that. And that that is definitely some post-pandemic kind of work. I, I never saw anything really like that before. All right. We have some other fun stories, and then we'll get to the steps that you asked about. But just a couple more examples. So this is Mildred Heath. She was the oldest living journalist. Um, she started as a reporter for her family's newspaper called The Beacon Observer in Nebraska. At age 15, she started working and she worked really hard. And uh, as she, you know, she met her husband, they got married. They actually lived in the office in one little room until they were able to save up for a home nearby and they raised their three children, but she worked there um, at the same desk for um, more than 85 years. And she um, was the, the oldest living journalist and it's documented and she lived not far away and she hopped on her scooter and she would ride to work and she would be there at 820 every day working six days a week. Nobody could really even remember her taking vacations and I don't know that I would recommend that but she was so fulfilled by her job um, that she really en enjoyed it and was there every day. She would hop in her scooter and go down to the local community center and she would get her scoop for the next day because what she focused on, she was not interested in world news or the wars or things going on in the world. She was interested in her community. So she was the one that created stories about the people in the town in which she lived the celebrations, the deaths, the, the community profiles, the exciting events that are happening. And that was her way of creating community. And that was really meaningful to her to be able to provide that information and share it and really kind of pull the community together. Talk about doing things that impact and help other people. That That's, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. So this next woman is Ruthie Schuster. 
Um, she's in North Huntington Township, Pennsylvania, which is kind of heading out towards Pittsburgh. She started to work at McDonald's at age 75. She worked there three days a week and the other four days she was dancing. So she was enjoying her time, doing what she did. She loved working with McDonald's because it was, again, a sense of community in a small Pennsylvania town. And she was well known for dancing and singing her way through McDonald's as she's serving customers and interacting with them. And she kind of became a local celebrity um, and that she worked there for 25 years. She never really told people how old she was, but somebody along the way discovered that last year she was going to be 100 years old. So in the middle of the pandemic, they put a throne out in front of McDonald's and set up a mailbox and she would sit in her throne and people would drive by and put cards and well wishes and notes inside. And you know, it was, people were kind of sad that they couldn't see her as much or engage with her as much, but um, she got her accolades and you know, it was just a fun community event. Um, and people asked her what her secret was, you know, her secret sauce to living a fulfilling life. And she said, I live every day like it's a bonus day. Oh. And I thought that was really neat. And then she added, I also eat a lot of chocolate. <laughs> so, and I'm really glad that they celebrated her because she ended up passing at the beginning of this year. So it was it was neat that they were able to to embrace her and recognize her when she was here to enjoy it. Absolutely. It reminds me my my first child's first caregiver while I was at work was also a McDonald's employee. So one of his very first words was fry. <laughs> That's a good first word. Jeff, any new comments? No, we are all caught up with the comments. Um, all thank right. you for checking them out. I'm sure we'll have You're some welcome. more though. We're gonna go into nuts and bolts. So as we do, please use the chat or we can turn on the audio. Let me know if, if the steps don't make sense or you want more detail. Um, I will tell you that, that this is, it's quite a process. I mean, you're making some major life decisions. And so Ellen and I, in the Propel package, we spend actually five modules, which with the subscription model means five months on this process. So I don't, don't be frustrated if it doesn't just all become clear today. One hour is not enough time, but hopefully it gets the juices flowing and we'd be glad to share the rest of the process with you if you're interested. But here's the overview. And just briefly, uh, the the um, comments and um, ability to speak are, are turned on. So feel free to chime in anytime. So thank you. Michelle. Beautiful. Thank you. So it comes down to four key questions, but they are doozy big questions. So the first one, what are your personal gifts, skills, talents? What if uh, oftentimes people can go clear back to childhood? What did people say about you that made you unique? What made you stand out in high school? When the neighbors need something, when do they turn to you? What, what are the things that you're known for? So I encourage you to take a little time and just start making a mental list. Wow, what, what, am, I, what am I good at? What do I uniquely do that my family values, that my neighbors value, that, that that people have noted about me. It's interesting, some of these are just who you are, the very unique way that you were created. And some of them are things that you've really worked to develop over time. You know, this is your area of expertise that you've spent years or decades honing.
going to move on to number two. What, what revs you up? What gives you energy? You're like, oh, when I do that, I just feel my best. That always kind of is a perks me up when this kind of thing happens or that I'm engaged in this sort of activity or I see these sorts of people. What we have a comment. Um, what if you're trying to think about what makes you happy and energized, and not much is coming to one's mind? You know what? In today's society, please don't feel alone if that's the case. And this might be the kind of question to make yourself a cup of tea and go out in the sunshine and just sit for a while and think about throughout the phases of your life when things were different what were some of the happiest moments and what made them so i would suggest having a little notebook that you just have with you so if you're out and about and something happens and it might spark some some ideas for you or you think, gosh, I haven't done that in so long, or you hear a song that kind of makes you jump back to, to a time where, where you were more energized or there was something that, that interested you. It's a great thought. Now the third question kind of goes the opposite direction. What really disturbs you? either globally or in your own community, in your own house, what would you just really like to help fix? And a lot of times the answer to this comes from, ooh, I'm good at this and I'm really interested in that and this really bothers me. So it starts to kind of come together that I could pull these pieces together and orient them toward this big problem that I want to help fix. Probably, if it's a big problem, you probably can't fix it by yourself, but you can align yourself with other people wanting mm -hmm. to fix that and get engaged and be part of the problem solving. That's right. A lot of people like to take a bigger problem, but find a local organization that's really invested or organized to help fix the problem. Yeah. And then you get a kind of sense of community there as well. They have a comment says i like to work with an idea from the onset to the final product itself mm. it's a project management creating yes. it at the beginning making it happen and following it through to the end and you could come alongside people that have a vague idea but don't know how to bring it to fruition you could be the one that helps them figure out how to do that Just a quick example that comes to mind is a man who's a, an executive in the automotive industry up in Detroit. And as he kind of went through a process like this, he realized that the environment just really bothers him. And in particular, energy sources and green energy sources. So although he's a, a sales executive and an engineer within this automotive company, he's already thinking about when I retire, I want to help fix this. I've got this engineering background. It just really excites me when new solutions are found. And so right now he has solar panels on his back deck and he's playing with solar power. And one day when the power went out in his neighborhood, everybody brought their cell phone over and <laughs> plugged into his solar panels. But he's just early in the process of figuring out how he plugs in to this really big issue and how his skills could align with that. And then the last one I think we've heard about in all the stories that we've talked about, what kind of lasting impression do you want to leave? 
because sometimes it's retirement that opens the door for you to start engaging in the things that really matter the deepest to you. And that becomes what you're most remembered for. So what kinds of things do you want to, to put your all into um, within your retirement? Forgive me if I've shared this example before, but it's the one that will always resonate the most in my heart. And this is somebody who's an airline executive and his family wanted him to kind of, he was gone a lot, very stressful kind of position. They wanted him to start thinking about slowing down, thinking about retirement. And he had such a hard time doing that until he kind of went through a process like this. And he realized that something that really bothers him in the world is that when children are born early, neonates, that that ability to be touched and and have skin time and nurtured is a time when their brain and their neurologic system continues to develop. And so if they're just left in their little cribs, they don't develop that as thoroughly as if they get that nurturing. And so this airline executive, when he has the time, goes to the neonatal ICU and holds these tiny little neonate babies and gives them that skin time while their parents need to be working and making a living, caring for other siblings, you know, just can't be there 24 seven. He stands in and helps to nurture their babies. I think that is the most beautiful thing. I mentioned that I was in Italy 10, 11 days ago. This is a picture on Palatine Hill in Rome. So some of the oldest dynasties that we know about historically were built on this hill that kind of oversees all of Rome. And so if you look at the big white stones, those are from the Middle Ages that have been dig up, dug up you know, over time that are underneath everything that's built on this hill. And then when you look at the, the I don't know if you can see my um, cursor, but the sort of smaller white rocks that are at the base, the base of this overall structure, those are from sometime in the very early years AD. And then when you look at the next layer of more of like a brick, that is from somewhere between about 500 AD and about 1200. And then when you see the still intact structure, that was built in the 1400s. And it was such, it hit me because of my interest in this area, it hit me as such a beautiful example of how the 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 infrastructure, the the development of who you are as a person happened in childhood, you know, maybe even before your memories. It started building there. And then you built on that to develop your interests and your early skill development as a child and adolescent. And then you built on that with your initial jobs, career paths, training that you chose. And then you built on that with your next layer of your career and you built on that. And retirement is just another opportunity to build on that. Now with a focus on why do you wanna give the world and what's gonna be fulfilling to you at this point? Does anybody else resonate with that picture? Because oof, that was that was powerful for me. We have a comment here, Michelle, it says, I want to, whoops, I'm sorry. I want to spend time with grandchildren and be a part of their lives. And I want to be accessible for them on 
an intentional level. I choose to make it a part of my weekly goal. I love that. And they will benefit Great. too. Talk about building le bottom layers for them. It's really good. Yeah. Here's another way to think about it is our whole being knows when we're in alignment with purpose and we're excited to get up every day and we know why we're doing what we're doing each day. We know we're contributing versus when we're not. So almost like doing an internal diagnostic. Are you excited about life right now and where it's headed or is there room to kind of turn a little bit a little bit more toward purpose what i have found this is this is like clearing a windshield this is my favorite analogy what i have found is i've worked with people again mostly leaders mostly men doesn't have to be men but um so far in my career, I found that it's men that, that most easily kind of decline rapidly after retirement. That imagine you're driving your car and you've got mud or dirt all over the windshield. You're not likely to press the accelerator because you can't really see where you're going. And that is so many people that are nearing the end of their career and they're like, I'm not going to retire. I'll never retire. I'm going to wait five more years. I'm going to wait 10 more years. I just keep putting it off because the windshield's muddy. They just can't picture what's going to happen beyond. And when we can go through processes like this and they realize, wow, I'm not done and I don't want to continue doing this. I've got big things I still want to accomplish with my life. Then the windshield is cleared. It's a bright vision ahead. And I've had people move their retirement closer by as much as a year or two once the windshield was cleared and they realized that there's there's a lot i still want to do and i need to be beyond my career to go do it michelle yeah can you go back one slide yes briefly? That one? can you can you comment just for briefly a little bit further on that bottom left um, statement about people are designed to know when they are not aligned yes when people are not living that fulfilling life, what we've seen repeatedly um, in our collective 60 years um, working with people is that that's when we see more depression, more anxiety, more loss of sense of self. People get into the state of despair or worry. They become more inwardly focused might spend their days in front of the TV and at that point their health declines, they're in more pain over time. It's just a really vicious negative downward spiral. A lot of Ellen, time internally yeah. we'll have some kind of dissonance, you know, some maybe just feeling unfulfilled or feeling maybe frustrated because you're not doing exactly what you wanted to do or, or the plan didn't fold out the way you had anticipated. So in, there's kind of like an internal discord that that makes it, um, you know, that that we pick up whether or not consciously we pick it up, but we may pick it up and and experience, you know, symptoms of anxiety or kind of restlessness or, you know, just frustration. And one of the Sorry. dangerous ones is when people feel forgotten, the world doesn't need me anymore, and they've moved on. That that leads to some negative decline I've seen many times. that help Jeff yeah I just just thought it was a really interesting statement um, yeah. yeah thank you you're welcome actually we've got a very specific story um, we won't go into too much detail because I think um, a lot of people are going to know this person but just wanted to use an example of somebody who was a, a top executive of a really big company and he described that man from from the minute he got to work until he could finally leave people needed his attention constantly you know lined up at his door the phone was ringing appointments were being scheduled it was just non-stop sometimes it started and ended even while he was driving and and phone calls 
this person actually had a really great thing that he was going to jump into and it, it had already started before he retired. And so this was a thing that probably used eight plus hours of his day. It had tremendous, tremendous meaning and benefit for other people. But even this person, when he was alone, when he wasn't doing this great thing that he'd created, it really bothered him that that company was doing absolutely fine without him. All those people that needed him did not need him at all anymore. He even in the first couple of months would occasionally go back for the day and, and it, it kind of hurt him to the core that him walking in the door had made not a bit of difference. They did not need him anymore. And so his health, even though he had this other big, great thing, his health declined and then he kind of realized what was happening and thankfully has really turned it around and his health is good now. But even with that big thing to pour himself into, it, it hadn't changed and there wasn't enough to change his mindset and that disappointment of not being needed at that job anymore. Can anybody resonate with that? I can share a story from my experience, Michelle, um, a woman that I had been working with. She had done a lot of philanthropic work in and around Baltimore. Um, and over the years, she was eventually confined to her bed due to a neurological condition that did, you know, made it impossible for her to walk. So even though she never worked, was not a paid employee somewhere, she was very involved in these philanthropic entities and actually started some foundations and was very involved in um, things that supported animals. She loved animals. She supported the aquarium and the zoo. And she wanted to, all, she also did a lot for underprivileged people by helping them get healthcare and support services and things like that. And it was really difficult for her to kind of over the years had distanced herself from those organizations because of her health. Um, but the people that were really part of her community in that world also, you know, they moved on to other things. So she didn't have those people there. Um, so as I was working with her, what we ended up doing is, is reconnecting her with those organizations. And she was finding ways that she could help with some fundraising and using our connections and ability to do that, that she could do from her bed. Oh, that's great. I just looked at my watch. Time has flown. This is another, just a quick story of a gentleman that retired, moved to Florida, and when he landed, his first thought was, where are the trees? And he spent the next few decades, because he lived well past 100, um, finding ways to get more trees in Florida. And there are now parks named after him and all sorts of initiatives where trees are planted and there's much more greenery all around his part of Florida because of his individual effort that started that. So just a summary of what we're talking about and why this is so important to Ellen and I is we found so many people with a successful career who did not plan for these sorts of things and that either had the rapid health decline, their relationships fell apart, or there's a rising suicide rate in people around this age of retirement or just before retirement. And we can't stand that, um, can't stand it. And what we find is that when there's a plan for health and this finding a purpose, then you can live for decades more being very, very fulfilled. So obviously that's what we want for people. And so I'm going to come back to this in a second. We want to invite you to engage with us in Propel because we dive so much deeper in everything we've talked about over these 12 months of the Elville Wellness Series and more and a lot more. So uh, Jeff will send this out to you. But if you go to this link and you use the code Elville, you can get in and, and check us out, see what this is, see how it could help you in your planning for just $10 a month or $120 a year. That's way below the $1,000 a year that, that it's going to cost other people. And each month you get a few short videos and some workbook. 
pieces that guide you through this entire process. So wanted to make that sure we had that invitation as we wrap up. So a little homework. Remember the, the three things that we talked about earlier that you wrote down that if you what you wanted to do if you had extra time. Think about that more if you didn't get three things, but pick one of those three things, even if it's you know just a simple little thing like reconnecting with an old friend. Do that and get it on your calendar be, be, between now and our next presentation. Absolutely. And just one more way to think about this. You don't have to figure this out right now. This is a very long journey. We just want to kind of get the wheels turning, get you started thinking about how important this is in your life. And a piece of it is rather than ask what the world needs, ask what makes you alive. And when you figure that out and you apply it to the world, everybody benefits. Next month, we'll be talking about thriving through the holidays. And Ellen in particular has so many great tips about that. So we do hope to see you then. And Jeff, once again, this has flown by and we're so grateful that you invited us to do this with you. Oh, well, thank you, Michelle and Ellen. Um, this is certainly one of my favorite hours of the month, spending some time with you and our attendees. Um, this was certainly very thought provoking for me. Um, I'm going to be thinking about it a lot over the next several days and um, I have some homework to do as well. So. Um, Really great stuff. Looking forward to next month already, thriving through the holidays. Um, my favorite time of the year uh, on a, a personal level. I already have the holiday traditions uh, blurring in my um, car uh, on Sirius okay. XM. So I'm already ahead of the game right there. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, so anyway, um, thank you for being part of our webinar series. Uh, I'll be sending out an email follow up as I always do with some. Um, hopefully helpful information to everybody. Um, Michelle shared some um, health tips that I'll be sending out. That's uh, going to be a link for everybody to click on. Um, I'll also send out the um, uh, discount link. Uh, really, um, uh, the tremendous um, benefits um, uh, propel um, and at such a, a great um, um, price, discounted price. Um, hope you all will take advantage of that. Um, I've participated in some of the modules and it really is very, very helpful. Um, and as far as our webinar series goes, uh, just real quickly, since we're up against the, the clock here, um, November 10th, um, supported decision making for uh, loved ones with disabilities. This is um, an extremely powerful um, new law that went into effect for um, uh, people with disabilities um, being able to make their own choices, um, providing they have a uh, person to support them in that uh, effort. Um, it is something that Mr. Elville is very, very passionate about. He um, helped the bill get across the finish line, which went into effect on October 1st, and he'll be giving uh, what uh, is going to be uh, a great presentation on November 10th. I hope you tune in for that. And then um, We'll have November 15th, uh, our wellness series, uh, Thriving Through the Holidays, which I'm already looking forward to, and I hope you are too. And we will see you again soon on the Elville webinar series. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.